So now that we've considered our circuit diagram, we're almost ready to put our parts on our breadboard and test our circuit. But before we do that, let's take a look at these uh, programming connectors, which are ideal for programming the 18F4550 when it's inserted into a breadboard. Uh, what we have here is a 6-pin header on one side and a 6-pin header on the other side, and then stranded wire connecting the two headers. Of course, we want to use stranded wire so that we can bend them a little bit. <clears throat> and you'll notice the colors that we're using here are white, red, black, uh, green, and yellow, which of course matches the white, red, black, green, and yellow on our diagram here. Uh, there are other alternatives to programming the 18F4550 when it's inserted into a breadboard. For example, you could hold either the pick kit 2 or 3 into one end of a header or a bent header, <clears throat> and then you would still sort of have to hold the the header into the breadboard, but it gets a little awkward. They always want to fall out if you use these. It's really worth your time to solder up some nice uh, breadboard programming connectors such as these. Uh, when I'm done with my three-part video series on uh, demo boards for the 18F4550, I'm going to make a separate uh, video on how to solder these connectors up. Uh, please could keep an eye out on my YouTube channel uh, for that. Okay, so one final aside before we get to our actual breadboarded circuit. Um, for anybody out there who's not familiar with the breadboarding process, there are lots of great resources um, out there to learn about that. Uh, I'd rather not get into breadboarding, generally speaking, in too much detail because I'm trying to keep this video down to a reasonable length of time and keep the focus on working with the 18F4550 rather than breadboarding circuits in general. But uh, there's plenty of other great resources out there if you'd like to learn about breadboarding. For example, if you go to Amazon.com, and you type in robot building for beginners, probably the ser first search result you'll get will be this robot building for beginners. This is the first edition, 2002, second edition published in 2009 uh, by David Cook. Uh, this book is excellent. This book starts out assuming no prior knowledge of electronics, so if you've never even held a multimeter in your hand before, or you've never seen a breadboard before, this book will start you from square one and takes you through the process of uh, designing a circuit, getting the parts for it, uh, breadboarding it, perfboarding it, and then finally constructing this robot which follows a line. Definitely great instruction in this book, highly recommended. Uh, if you'd prefer not to go with a book, if you'd prefer to go with a YouTube video, there are some very good alternatives there also. If you type in breadboard, one of the first results that come up, in this case the first result is this video here, two-part series by Electronics Instructor, Introduction to Breadboard. Uh, I watched these videos through just the other day. Um, they're pretty good videos. Uh, there's also quite a few other videos on YouTube that you'll be able to find that will help you out quite a bit. But honestly, I really would suggest if you've never breadboarded a circuit before, purchase this book and go through building the robot. The information you get from this book will be invaluable, more than worth the 1870. Highly recommended. And here we have our completed breadboarded circuit. Uh, this is about the simplest breadboarded circuit you could possibly have. Uh, all we really have on it is the 18F4550 at the center uh, with a stabling cap next to it and powers and grounds of course and then four LEDs and four resistors and our programming connector. Uh, your circuit might look slightly different based on if you have a different breadboard or if you choose to arrange your parts differently. Uh, but in any case, if, if anything here looks truly foreign to you or not familiar at all, I definitely recommend checking out those uh, sources I mentioned just a moment ago. Those will help you get started with breadboarding if you're new to it. Uh, something else to keep in mind is that the 18F4550 is an ESD, that's electrostatic discharge sensitive chip. Uh, you definitely don't want to handle the 18F4550 unless you're properly grounded. Um, if you're not familiar with taking ESD precautions, once I'm done with my three-part series on 18F4550 demo boards, I'm going to make a separate video on observing ESD precautions. Uh, definitely you'll want to keep an eye out on my YouTube channel for that. And so now that we're done with our breadboarding process, the next step is to write the software that we're going to load into the 18F4550. Okay, so now that we have our completed breadboarded circuit, we're going to next write software that we're going to load into the 18F4550. And to do that, we're going to need three pieces of software to write the software that we're going to load into the 18F4550. And those three things are MPLAB, 
MPLAB C18, and the PicKit 2 or 3 standalone programming software. Now the good news on all three of these is that they're all free downloads directly from microchip.com. So let's take a look at those. Uh, the MPLAB, that, that'll be our integrated development environment. And MPLAB C18, that's the C compiler for MPLAB. And then PicKit 2 or PicKit 3 standalone programming software works with either the PicKit 2 or the PicKit 3 to actually physically load the program that we write into our 18F4550. So if we go to Google and we type in MPLAB, that'll take us right there, MPLAB and graded development environment. And it brings up this page. Now this is the uh, new offering that uh, Microchip is developing now, uh, MPLAB X. Uh, this is a cross-platform and open source tool. It's written in Java, so it runs on both Windows, uh, Macintosh, and Linux. Uh, but unfortunately it's still in beta at the moment. I'll probably do a future video on this on my YouTube channel, but for the moment let's stick with the tried and true uh, MP Lab, which is up to version 8. And so it's a, you see it says here go to the bottom of the page for free MP Lab ID downloads. It has it mentions some features, some nice screenshots and stuff. Eventually we'll get down to the bottom here, MP Lab IDE version 8.76. And then we're going to choose save as and save it to whichever directory you prefer to download into. I'll choose demo video downloads and to save time during the video you can see I cheated here and downloaded it ahead of time. So once we have MPLAB uh, IDE then we're going to want to download the C compiler for MPLAB. So if we type MPLAB C18 and there we go for search result in MPLAB C18 C compiler. Uh, now you'll notice at the top here it says buy it now. Don't let that phase you. Um, the buy it now part is referring to the optimized version which you would have to pay for. The non-optimized version uh, is free. So you'll see at the bottom special free instructions for academic light use available here. So the, the non-optimized version is called the uh, light mode version. So that's what we want to get. MPLAB C for PIC18 version 3.4 in light mode click on that. Now it'll ask you to uh, create an account. Um, go ahead and create an account. Again, there's no charge for the light version. Uh, the only thing is they might send you some emails trying to get you to buy the pay version, but but that's okay. Um, it's not going to hurt you at all. You definitely want to go ahead and create that account and then that'll take you back to this screen here and then when you click on MPLAB C18 3.4 light, it will let you download it. So once you've got that, now we need to download the standalone programmers for either the PicKit 2 or PicKit 3, whichever one you have. So PicKit 2. And there we go, first result, PicKit 2, development debugger. And here's the PicKit 2 page. Of course, uh, Microchip's trying to move everybody over to the PicKit 3. That's their uh, you know new introduction in terms of standalone programmers. But um, if you have the PicKit 2, this is the software that you want to get. PicKit 2 version 2.61. Uh, now this is not, of course, the physical PicKit 2 that arrives in the mail. This is the software that works with the PicKit 2 to download the program that you're writing into the 18F4550. So you're going to want to download that, choose Save As, again save it to your usual download location, and now if you have the PicKit 3, PicKit 3, uh, you do an internet search on Picket 3, you'll find this page pretty quickly. Now, the Picket 3, uh, when it first came out, um, Microchip was trying to get everybody to use it only from within MP Lab to load software into chips. But the standalone programming application for the Picket 2 was so popular that uh, due to demand, Microchip came out with a separate standalone programming application for the Picket 3 also. But since it was an add-on later, you'll notice it's not featured quite as prominently at the top of the page. You'll have to scroll down a little bit, but eventually you'll find it. <clears throat> Here it is, Picket 3 Standalone Programmer App version 1.0 for Windows. That's what you want to download. And choose Save As, save it to the usual location. So once you're done with those, <clears throat> those either three downloads or four, depending on if you have the Picket 2 or 3, you'll have these four files in the directory you downloaded them to. Go ahead and extract, preferably to the same directory, the MPLAB IDE and the PicKit 2 or 3 or both. And uh, the MPLAB C18 compiler comes in its own executable. It's not in a uh, zip file. So once you've unzipped everything, you'll want to install MPLAB IDE. They're currently up to version 8.76. And double-click Setup.exe. I won't do that on this computer because it's already installed. 
and it might confuse it. Uh, but anyhow, the installer for MP Lab is very good. I've never had any problems installing anything I've downloaded from microchipdirect.com. Basically, if you just choose all the defaults and let the installer do what it thinks best, it's almost for certain going to work out well for you. Once you've installed MP Lab, then you're going to want to install MP Lab C18, the C compiler for MP Lab. So again, double click on this. I'm not going to do it because it's already installed. The installer's good. It's pretty straightforward. You shouldn't have a problem there. Then the last step you're going to want to do is install the standalone programming software for either the PicKit 2 or the PicKit 3, whichever one you have, or both. Again, there's a setup executable file in those downloads. It's pretty straightforward. So once you've done all that, either on your start menu or on your desktop or both, you should have uh, some shortcuts here. One will be to MP Lab, and then another one will be to either the PicKit 2 or the PicKit 3 or both. So at this point we're ready to dive into MP Lab and start writing the software that we're going to load into the 18F4550.